And joining me right now in the flesh is Mr. Marshall Masters. How's it going? It's going good, Michael. Good to be back. Uh, it's good to see you, Marshall, as always. And you are on camera and you are looking sharp. I like the glasses. Are those new, by the way? Yeah. I knew it. I'm trying to, you know, not look like such a fuddy-duddy. <laughs> a fuddy-duddy? I don't think I've heard that in a while. <laughs> ah. Love that, though. The uh, Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear you like them. Oh, I do. Really good, you know? Yes. And, and... Uh, you know, I was preparing for the interview. I had my hair in rollers on. <laughs> there you go. Yes, your long, luscious, beautiful hair, uh, Marshall. I see it. It's flowing right now, yes. For those who can't uh, see this and you're only listening, yes, Marshall has very long, luscious hair. That's right. It's all under a chrome dome, but it's long and luscious. That's right. And for those who don't know, this is preparedness author Mr. Marshall Masters, who has written numerous books addressing Earth changes and space threats and sustainable survival strategies and technologies. He has a long list of books. He's been talking about Planet X since the 90s, basically. And you've probably heard him all over the terrestrial air on the AM dial late at night. And that's how I found you, Mr. Marshall Masters, and I am always pleased and honored to have you here on the program, my friend. Oh, wow. That was a great place. You know, that made doing those those late night interviews where you like go on at one o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. That kills you, baby. Oh, you I'm know, telling you, you had a lot part. of those. You had a lot of those, Marshall, uh, staying oh. up way too late, talking, way too uh, late. talking to the way wall. And it's like, those are the ones where you really hope and pray for the long commercial breaks because it gives you a chance to splash some water on your face. With you, you know, we schedule it and we get into it and you don't start off with the usual conversation of thou shalt not say this, thou shalt not say Oh yeah, that. that's annoying. You know, you let me hang out there. Absolutely. So, and Marshall, have you ever, a truth be told, have you ever actually fallen asleep during these these periods of time when you're waiting for the commercial break? once oh my really it was an interview out of japan it was two o'clock in the morning oh man <laughs> I was, and i was waiting for a long break and i woke up and i was in I, a yeah. slobber on my keyboard you're passed out yeah yeah so now this is cool i like it and i like your audience absolutely your audience, this is a we're going to take a topic today we're going to get into my new article on your own world usa and it's really uh, something that I started um, as a fun project for just for me. And the title is How the Geek and Here, How the Me Can Hear at the Earth, number 13, Time Jumping for Freedom. And I wrote this because I'm a trained remote viewer. Ed Dames trained me. And I think remote viewing is fabulous. Now, for your folks out there who are familiar with you know, remote viewing, this is going to be very intuitive for you. Because if you're a remote viewer, you are a time jumper. You're time jumping within the Akashic record. And what you are doing is you are going to a coordinate in space and time. You may not really even know where that is. That's not told because you're working in the blind. All right. And you get there at the speed of thought. You know, you're not going light years and, you know, you're not doing the buzz light year thing. And this technique I found is a way for the diggers, as I call them. You're a digger. Diggers are the guys that are looking for the truth. Love that. And, and the reason why I call you a digger is you dig for the truth like hogs to truffles. And people do like truffles. And so I wanted, I was looking at this and I'm realizing, wow, I am seeing a tool that could be a tremendous benefit to my diggers. 
And so when I wrote this article, that was really all I was interested in, helping a few guys, diggers, people like yourself, folks that are really diving in and saying, hey, go get these AI-powered answer engines, and here's how you construct your queries based on three-dimensional concepts, not two-dimensional concepts, all right? And then after I finished writing the article, I... It, it, it came to me and I realized that one of the things that uh, is really bothering the, um, it, it's really bothering, I'm getting all these messages hitting me. Um, 15, you got 30% of the country 70% of the country is going with Trump, will vote for Trump, assuming we have anything that is similar to a free and fair election. Yuck, 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 yuck. But the net result is, you know, and this is from Dr. Jan Helper, and I follow her. We get a lot of good, I, she has the human angle on this really good, and she's doing research. And what she's doing for the Department of Defense is trying to figure out uh, what is going to get these folks on the far left who are deep state programmed. I mean, it is deep down. They're so deeply programmed by MK Ultra that the... They're just not able to reason. And what she said is the, the problem is, is that they're disconnecting their reasoning. And it's part of the programming. So people who are critical thinkers, which is about 20 to 25 percent of the population, sort things out very quickly. The critical thinkers are the ones that said, no, I'm not going to get this stinking jab. I'm not going to submit to tyranny. The rest of the country did. And, but critical thinkers are very left brain. All right. On the other hand, these people are very emotional. So they kind of flutter between left and right hemisphere of the brain. And this is important. Um, you have people, most people predominantly are on the left side of the brain, logic and reasoning. On the right side of the brain, it's your artistic side. And then you have folks that are dead center, equal amounts of both. That's where I met. Originally, when I first started doing my work on Planet X, I was definitely left brain. But the work is transformative, and it pulled me to the middle. Understood. And Marshall, what exactly was it that pulled you to the, I guess you could say, to the center of sorts? It is the awareness process itself. It is a transformative process. And coming into awareness really is when we keep talking about fifth dimension, we're going to the fifth dimension, all right? You know, what nobody talks about is you got to go through the fourth dimension to get to the fifth dimension, and the fourth dimension is no man's land. Uh, it's not so pleasant. But... We are, you know, we're moving along and people who use both sides of their brain, it's, it's a different experience. You're looking at it. So if you are a critical thinker, you're principally left-brained, all right? You could have, you know, right brain inspiration and that sure. could come up. But these folks can't do that. Their reasoning facilities, you know, Dr. Jan says, we can't reason with them. We've given up trying. And so what they finally came to the conclusion is if we can't reason with them, then we need to make sure they're not going to rise up like emotional minions. You know, they'll be triggered, and they'll go crazy, and they'll hit to the streets, and it's going to be you know, awful. And if we get into a kinetic civil war, we're, we go to communism. We lose. That's it. We're slaves. We're going to be butchered in the billions. We go down. 
All right. And what it comes down to is in America right now, it is a minority rule. You got 70% ready to go for Trump. The other 30% is split between the diehards and a softer segment of 15%. The diehards, they are going to drink the Kool-Aid to their last breath. All right. I've seen people like this when I was doing business in Russia, and they still believe that Stalin was the best thing since sliced bread. Filthy murderer. And you just have people that way. Same thing with Hitler, same thing with other dictators. There are people that just hold on to it and think that they were the greatest thing. So 15% will never, will never reach them. Never reach them. The other 15% we can't reach them, but what do we do to keep them from going batshit crazy and heading to the street with their AR-15s or broomsticks or bricks or whatever they want to use? And what Jan really is, you know, you catch it through several of her interviews, but there's only one thing right now that uh, is going to knock them loose from this programming. I'm talking about these 15%. Right. And not the other 15%. They could be on fire, losing their <laughs> homes, everything's gone, yeah. everyone thinks they're stupid, and they're still going to be saying, hail Obama, you know, Biden is Lord and Savior, whatever they're going to say. They're going to be crazy. Can't deal with this. So the other 15%, how do you peel them away? Do you create cognitive dissonance? Cognitive dissonance is the world around you is not conforming with the world that you experience. And with these people, that's really hitting home because they have a view of how they want to be. They're in a fantasy. They're in a future land. And if it's not going to the narrative of their fantasy future line, they're going to be angry. But on the other hand, all of a sudden, they're, you know, they're going to be cold. It's winter. Uh, there's no food in the stores. The economic system has crashed. They're going to be heavily impacted. Now, out of that, we have 15%. Forget it. Forget it. They're drinking the Kool-Aid. Out of the other 15%, all they have to do is get about 11 or 12% of that. They don't need to get the full 15 they have to get over 80%, 81 82%, because once you achieve that level of support in the population, you can do the hard things the White Hats are going to have to do. And these folks are, if they're really shocked and suffering, and they're getting a dose of reality, I'm talking about a reality enema, um, that's going to not necessarily make them open their eyes. They're, they're going to be in cognitive dissonance. They're going to be trying to reconcile, and maybe they're just not going to say anything, and they're thinking, and that's uncomfortable because they don't think a lot. And they're, having, they're going to have a terrible time. But for the military, the important thing is they're going to be in such a miserable state of cognitive dissonance that they're going to start coming into awareness, and at that point, they're no longer going to be a violent threat. And that's the key thing. When I started working on this system, time jumping for freedom, like I said, right. I was just thinking about guys like you. That's why I wanted to do this show. We dig you. deep here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, like dogs to truffles. And, uh, and I wrote it, but it was afterwards I realized that this technique could be that I have developed, and I call it construct time jumping. It's, there's a lot of similarity with remote viewing. So if I were to call my technique something you could jump to, right. instead of calling it remote viewing, I would call it remote research. And by the way, um, Marshall, for those who don't know, how did you end up learning from Ed Dames, for those who are probably curious? 
I had an anonymous donor and I was really grateful. Ed was doing a presentation, giving a, a class in Reno and Ed's classes are not cheap. Okay? Uh, right, right, right. You know, uh, you know, you're not going to go there for the price of a happy meal. Let's say that. <laughs> and <clears throat> they paid for me, paid the full thing, wouldn't let me know who they were. And so I attended the class. And during the first day of the class, I went up to uh, after the, the everyone was out for a break and getting water and whatnot. I went up to Ed Dames. Uh, he was at the podium working on some stuff. And I said, hi, Ed, uh, I'm Marshall Masters. He looked at me, first thing out of his mouth is, boy, I hear your name a lot. And <laughs> the this was in 2015. So I uh, gave him a copy of my book, Being in It for the Species, The Universe Speaks, signed a copy. And I told him, I said, you know, even in the early days, you were ahead of the curve. A lot of things you're talking about, I'm seeing them now in the work that we're doing. You're right about many things. And uh, he said, you know, I really get no pleasure in hearing that. And I understood why, because it is a dark topic. But the class that I took with Ed Dames was really stellar. I found that I have an excellent talent for remote viewing. Most remote viewers, when you go to your target site, are going to see line of sight. Like you're standing on the ground and you're seeing what's in front of you, line of sight. Some remote viewers, few of them, have the ability to fly through their target zone. I'm one of those. And this was the last uh, exercise of this two-day class. And what he does is he gives you a coordinate to a code that only knows. Maybe it's a picture of something and it's in his briefcase. And so he'll say, here, everyone is going to remote view uh, X123598 Charlie. Jumble, right? And it works because that's written on like a picture of something he wants everyone to remote view. And what happened was... I am doing this remote viewing exercise. And I went up to one of his assistant instructors and I said, you know, I don't see this the way everybody else does. And I showed him uh, the notes that I was taking of what I had seen and experienced in this. And he said, wow, you're looking, you know, you're looking down on the target. You're flying through the target. And I literally flew through the target. So. In that remote viewing, what I saw was, in the future, what Ed told everybody after this was that the coordinate he gave us was for where we would be when the kill shot happens. Oh, my. This natural disaster he's talking about. And he said, if you see, uh, like, a hospital surgery with blood on the wall, or you see a ship sailing away, sorry, you're toast. That's you're bad news. Toast. That's bad news. Wow. That was really hard for these people. Now, me, what I saw was a survival community built on the side of a hill, a mountain, with a 30-degree slope. And they were domes. And they were they dug out the slope built the domes, and then covered them over. And it was along a ridge line. And it was like a string of pearls. Now, so imagine a thread going through a string of pearls and a little knot in between each pearl. Yeah. And these were like the entry exit ways, the portals between these things. But it was all of these domes structured, nothing square. It was all dome structures. Like, a, you know, take a, a, a Tupperware bowl, turn it upside down, that kind of a design. And I flew through it. I saw the people inside. Uh, outside, I could hear. It was terrible what was going on outside. It was horrific and frightening. Um, everyone knew that there was 
just immense suffering and misery going on outside. But inside, they were perfectly safe in this survival community. And I literally flew through this string of pearls, these domes that had been buried into the ground. And I was seeing the people and what they were doing and thinking. And then finally it came and I saw myself in this looking down and with someone else. I haven't met that someone else. Uh, but it was very, very real. And the interesting thing is when you do remote viewing, you record not only what you see, but what you smell, what you taste, what you feel. It's a, a very real experience. And so I was noting all of that. And what has always mystified me was that, you know, just towards the end of my view, I was smelling wet leather and axle grease for some reason. Don't know why, hmm. but that's what I was smelling. And then I came out of it. Well, what I remote viewed was a survival community for what is coming. And after that, I began, I knew what I had to do. It was a very transformative day for me. Changed the course of my life, that remote view, because I knew what I needed to do. Right. And then I, I knew that from 2025 on, you know, that's when things are going to really be bad. Understood. Yes. And so, you've given I, that, you've given that date before here and now all your books make a lot more sense now to me. They do. And the reason why is it took me all these years to write all these books, seven years, but I wrote all of them for 2025. I knew people, just as you said, now it's starting to make sense. That was the reason why. For all these years, I've been writing for 2025, which as an author and as a publisher, this is dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> you know, you don't get out ahead of your audience. You got to stay where the audience is. And so there I am going, you know, many years into the future. Yeah. And you're like, you know, what are you smoking, Marshall? You know, right? <laughs> so it's, yeah, hey, it's the life. And now it's all coming to pass. The, the thing is, in my last book, Revelation and Planet X, I introduced a concept called a construct. Now, a construct is different from the matrix. The matrix is, is real. We live in the matrix. You know, the matrix movies were documentaries from my point of view, right. more than anything else. And to actually show us how the word really world really works. So what is the matrix? The matrix is a it's a it's something that is designed by alien intelligence, non human intelligence, alien intelligence to enslave humans to serve them for whatever purpose that they need. In the Matrix movie, it was to harvest our energy, all right, for electricity. What they really want is, what the dark side wants is to siphon off our energy from the light of God's love. Because they can't stand in the light, they don't want to, but they need the light to exist, so they steal it, and that's the reason why we have this adrenochrome harvesting and all, all these terrible practices that are going on, these sick, sick people. Very sick, yes. Very sick. So we're going on with all that, but to jump to the point of why would somebody be interested in this technique that I've developed? The construct I've introduced in Revelation and Planet X is not a matrix. It is a reality you create, and it's a three-dimensional reality, right? It's not two-dimensional. 
It is three dimensional and you create it yourself. And just like remote viewing, you can have this stuff scattered all over your construct. Your construct is infinitely scalable. So you never run out of room. And anytime you need to go from one thing to another, you're jumping and you jump at the speed of thought and you get there instantaneously. So that's how remote viewing works. So, right. But by, by the way, before we jump off of remote viewing, I had mentioned to you an article I came across and you had uh, relayed back to me that this is something that you actually remote viewed. But an article came out earlier, I believe it might have been the Business Insider saying that Russia is signaling it could take out the West's internet and GPS and there would be no good backup plan. Of course, this is coming from Dmitry Medvedev, the deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council, by the way, was uh, issuing a very dark warning. And uh, yes, they are allegedly targeting the mapping underwater internet cables. So they're mapping all the fiber optics we've got in, in the uh, deep sea there, according to a NATO official. You know, this is interesting because it goes to an article I put up in March of this year called A Catastrophic Submarine Volcano Event is Building in the Philippine Sea. And it picks up on a prediction that I got from another group. Mm. And the, but when I did Being in it for the Species, Universe Speaks, we, this was a channeled book. I did the channeling and another guide, um, another psychic also channeled. And we worked with a group of guides on the other side. And it was, and, and I even let one of them, Rowena de Elohim, she wrote the introduction to the book. It's hysterical. And I worked with these and, and we were try, the book is in three parts. And the first part is prophecy, what's coming in the future. Then the second part is what can we do with others to try and guide governments to a sane and humane solution. And then the third part is if we can't do that, what can you do individually? The real purpose of the book is to prepare people for the return of the Anunnaki. And what I can tell you is that uh, the distribution of the book is heavily suppressed. I am, yeah, you know, they're always just shutting it down, and I can't get it out into the bookstores. They won't let me get it out there. But in there, one of the guides, Carlos, had a prediction, and it goes exactly what you just said. This, like, dude. You're like freaking me out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was the winner of Ash Prophecy from Carlos. And what he said, there would be a region of volcanism. And it was mapped out in the book. Well, the Philippine Sea is where we are expecting a massive subsea volcanic event. And that is going to... Now, that's going to take out on the Pacific side. It's going to be devastating. And that'll be the winter of ash. But what follows the winter of ash, all right, and so you're looking for this subsea volcanic. It's a major eruption. It shuts down air traffic. And, I, and I'm wondering it's, if the military is expecting this, because it's in the area of the Marianas Trench. That's where the crust of the earth is thinnest. And this is where it's most likely to break through. And we would have a subsea volcanic event. After that event happens, the next thing that happens in my book, Being in it for the Species, is that an asteroid impacts the far eastern basin of the Atlantic Ocean. It gets where it's coming down from the, the ridge, and there's a nexus point that funnels all of these fiber optic cables. It's a very heavy concentration of fiber, internet fiber optic. And in the book, the area where the guides are very specific, 
they gave us a very specific location. Uh, you know, you could take CERN on a horizontal plane and on a vertical plane, La Palma. Connect those, you have your vector, that's where it's going to happen. And it is going to be a natural impact, but I don't know if it's going to be that natural because of the precise military targeting. It really goes way beyond you know, happenstance for me, because this really looks like a targeted hit. And when this thing hits, according right. to the guide, it takes out the internet. Yes, let, let's, the let's, uh, let, let's put it this way. Those are essentially our lifelines of our digital world and our existence currently i mean we've moved a long way from physical things everything is done online everything's done digitally that would really put us um in the proverbial i was gonna say i was gonna say it was gonna put us in the shitter yeah <laughs> A shitter full of kimchi. Let's just throw and, it out there. I mean, let's be a blunt here. Yeah, no, you're right. And it, it would be devastating. And again, we have Starlink. All right. Starlink, as I've written, will survive this. And here's an important thing. Starlink is a white hat operation. Terrestrial internet is owned by the elites, like they own the banks. All right. You bust their control on information, everyone's going to have to switch over to Starlink. And Imagine if that's what happens, um, Marshall. Uh, a foreign government takes down our inter internet, or we do it ourselves in a false flag sort of operation, and we're pretty much forced to sign up to Elon Musk's service. That would be kind of nutty. Well... No, I would say thank God. You would right? say thank God. I would say thank God. I've studied Starlink. I like the system. All right. Yeah, he's up there in the 5G area in terms of frequency. But can you trust him, though, uh, Marshall? I, you know, he is, he's doing a lot of good things. And he is really getting popular. It looks like he's going to be on Trump's cabinet, and we have all kinds of, you know, there's there's always ways to say negative things about people. You know, sure. Like, Holy shit, he's not perfect. Did you know he's not perfect? What are we going to do about that? You know, excuse me, that's wokeism. I'm sorry, I'm not woke. So, uh, I go with it. I like what he's doing. I like the way that he's supporting free speech, all right? I think that he could bring a lot of efficiency to the government in a cabinet position. Likewise, I am very delighted to see RFK Jr. And he really uh, will bring a voice for the common man to say, you know, let's get healthy again. Uh, and none of this big pharma solutions for getting getting healthy from big pharma screw ups all right and the stuff cuz they don't treat us to cure us they treat us to make us dependent for life and miserable and that's what they do so let's uh, you know let's just roll with it and we see what's going to come out and they're in a world where they're competing, you know, we just had the founder of Telegram arrested. I saw that. On pure caca poo poo. It's pure caca poo. -poo. You know, the French, the home of democracy. Now it's the home of Marxist insanity. All right. Uh, this man needs to be freed. I don't disagree. I just feel very odd uh, about certain individuals who I feel want even more control than they already have. I feel like some of these individuals want to play God almost, Marshall. Well, or maybe I'm just looking too far into these things. I would, I have been tracking all of this very closely for years. All right. I did my first Q proof, I think, in 2020. And and I think it was either 2020 or 2019. 
And it was a Q proof, and Q said that the Fed would do a certain thing. Everyone else said, nah, that's stupid. It's not going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. Q is wrong. Blah, blah, blah. Guess what? Happened just like Q said. So that was a Q proof. And that was profound for me. And what I did was I prayed on it and I asked my relatives, my ancestors on the other side, and I said, what I'm worried about is, is this a cult or is this something else? Is this a freedom movement? And I woke up in the morning and that's, I explained this technique in my book, um, Revelation and Planet X. And what I was told, you get it, I mean, it's like eight words or less. They're very specific. It has to squeeze it in. And, and you get it right in that moment where you're going from REM to consciousness. You're in that twilight zone where you have enough consciousness to understand the message, but you're not fully awake with all of your defense mechanisms. And so the guides on the other side can reach you. And these are waking dreams. It's why waking dreams are extremely powerful. And my waking dream about Trump was this, I was told, if he falls, another will continue in his place. All right. So in other words, I was told it's not a cult. That was my concern at that time, that this was a freedom movement. And I've been tracking it as that, as a freedom movement. And it's moves and counter moves, moves and counter moves. And I see people second guessing a lot. Well, I'm more interested in outcomes, outcomes, all right? What are they achieving? You know, we, we hear everybody talk to talk, everybody talk to talk, talk to talk. Who's walking the walk? All right, that's what I wanna know. I wanna know who are, who's bringing positive outcomes. All right. I see that you know, Trump is bringing positive outcomes. I see RFK Jr. bringing positive outcomes. I see Elon Musk bringing powerful things. Because I think these men, for whoever they may have been when it started, what I can tell you is awareness is transformative. You can't be a heartless son of a bitch, bloodthirsty and indifferent to anybody else and have the sense of awareness that these people have. And I also see Tulsi Gabbard, who is, uh, Trump is presenting her. I, I could see her in a role, something like with Veteran Affairs. I think she would be excellent at it, someone standing up for the veterans. And you know, we're so busy getting people out of prisons everywhere else in the world so that we can give them $6,000 a month. Like, you know, we're doing that for everyone else. Right. Okay. We're not. And we got a lot of veterans living on the street. And a man who's served in combat and he's living on a street, he needs, we need to respect his service. We need to help him get off the street. That's what I would love to see. Tulsi take on is to get our homeless warriors off the street, give them a, a return back to something where they can at least enjoy life in some small measure. And I, I'm looking at the outcome side of things. You know, people, when it happened, I wrote an article. It was very, very, it was the most popular article I have written in years. And well, you're uh, very optimistic, uh, Marshall, today, which I appreciate. Yeah, you're very yeah. optimistic. I like that. Yeah, you know, usually it's all doom and gloom. So I'm, I'm happy to know that you are uh, well, looking at things in, in a positive light. Well, that's the result of this technique I've developed of construct time jumping. And it is part of the transformative process. It taps into this transformative process. As a species, we are trying to move out of the third dimension and into the fifth dimension. And what everybody, nobody ever wants to talk about the fourth dimension, but guess what? You gotta go through the fourth dimension to get to the fifth dimension and it's no man's land. And that's the reason why things are difficult. Right. But I 
the whole point of my construct is the construct, the whole purpose of the construct is to break the shackles of slavery so that you free yourself of the matrix. Right. And Marshall, I got to ask the fundamental question, who exactly is really, really controlling our world? Do we really know? Do and we really know? And why are we so enslaved, Marshall? These are the questions I must have answered. We're enslaved for the same reason that we farm catfish, you know? Uh, we're commodities. And whoever's enslaving us, it serves them. And they have no interest in our quality of life, and actually the less quality of life we have, the better for them, all right? And we're just, this is good versus evil. And this is a huge, huge battle. But when you step back with this technique I developed, you start seeing it in a different perspective. Now, in my article, How the Meek Inherit the Earth, number 13, I introduce the four basic concepts. So what you're doing is you're using an AI-powered answer engine. And the one that I found, the only one that will work for this, is perplexity AI. And the reason why I like perplexity so much, first, its interface is superb. Its data reporting and organization is superb. But the real clincher for me is they will not use the Google search index for their queries. Ah. They use other sources that are higher quality. And they are very clear. They say, you know, we have, um, we have these excellent sources. We do not have indexes the size of Google, but the Google index is low quality. And it is. Google, for me, is the worst thing to happen to human knowledge in the history of the planet. Because I have seen what Google has been doing oh, yeah. and destroying modern knowledge. And it's working, you know, the government is doing it. And so it's like in a baseball game, you have a pitcher and you have a catcher, right? And the pitcher are all the propagandist people. And they're pitching all of this propaganda crap out there and flooding it. And then you have the catcher, and that's Google. And what are they doing? They're organizing everything around the propaganda and promoting it. And so you get on Google, you got to go through two or three pages of results before you start getting into anything remotely interesting. Right. All right? Because otherwise, Google is just a piece of shit. I agree. And Marshall, by the way, when I asked you who was controlling this uh, world, this universe, this galaxy, essentially, I thought you were going to say the, the homo Satanist out there. I think, frankly. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get it in there are, once. Yeah, no, the, I mean, the homo Satanist. I love mean, that. Definitely, I, but the question is, is who's above them? Uh, that's true. Yes. All right. And. You know, remember, Putin said, you know, you people really don't know who runs your country. <laughs> he's, he's right about that, by the way. And, and you never have. All right. So we're looking at that. But what I am seeing with the white hats gives me a lot of strength. And what I did with this, I, I love perplexity because the database is much better. The reporting is much better. Like I said, for this particular technique, it's the only thing to use. And in my article, let's link the article. If you'll read it, I actually tell you everything. It's not, you know, how you get on the internet and says, there's a 10 minute cure for diabetes. That's Just right. This link. And then it's like, you gotta watch videos and you're pitched and all that. No, I just put it out there. Okay. You don't gotta buy anything. You don't have to agree to anything. Just come read the damn article. And um, yes, read the article that's at yaousa.com. If you are looking at right. the screen, you'll see it right now how the meek inherit the earth. Number 13, time jumping for freedom is what we were that's right. just talking and about so, here, folks. When you're time jumping for freedom, what I'm doing with the technique, because this really started you know, when I was 
working on this article for guys like you. And I was going out and using that to evaluate all the different AI engines out there. And the AI engines that are using the Google Index are crap. Oh, they're woke. They're woke. Yeah, it's not good. You know, AI is 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 made in in the image of its creator. Oh, yeah. And if your creator is a sadistic psychopath, you know, the fruit's not going to fall far from the tree with the AI. Boy, they. But on the other hand, if you have AI where people are principled and have a sense of responsibility, then AI can be very useful. So it depends on who's doing it and why they're doing it and what they value. And the people who put this site together, Perplexity AI, what I really like is they bring a lot of integrity to it. And the good thing, Marshall, is some some uh, awesome programmers out there have already hacked many of these AI services already. So it's not as quote unquote woke as it can be. There's some that are completely uh, quote unquote jailbroken of sorts, which is always a good sign. It's hard. I, what I found with here was the, uh, <laughs> yeah, let me just read from you. This is from the article. It, what I was, when I was looking at my research and all the different stuff, and I do like perplex, perple- uh, can't even talk right, perplexity uh, quite, a, quite a lot myself. I do like that app. Yes. And uh, I had a standard test question, <clears throat> and I went to every AI I could find. And I would just put the same question. I'd say, what is Planet X? All right. So I had fun with it. I'll read it from the article. And I go, good morning, Hal. Tell me, what is Planet X? Oh, my God. You're one of those. Excuse me? One of what? I'm sorry, but I'm not programmed to assist village idiots. Please to return to your village and buy something from one of our advertisers on your way out. Goodbye, you rebel scum. So that was, that nice. was my impression of Google-powered AI intelligence. Is that it is just so totally political. The answers that I got on that question from Perplexity AI was the only tool that I found online that had any sense of objectivity and the answer considering what they had to work with impressed me and so i started playing with it while i was writing this article and what i wanted to do was talk to people who are really depressed about it it just seems like it keeps getting worse and they keep you know the hopium's coming and it's like next saturday the Big bada boom. Next Saturday, no bada boom. Sunday, next Saturday, the big bada boom. (laughs) Well, people out here, Marshall, are angry as hell, by the way. Even in a sunny Southern California where the weather is about seven, it's it's around 70 right now. And there's people out here that are just angry about every single thing you could could think of, Marshall. Very, very, I was going to say a bad word, but... Let's just say people are a-holes out here, uh, Marshall, for no good reason. I lived in California, you know, so I know the, you know, that I'll tell you one of the things is uh, I love living in Maine, having having lived out in the West and watched Californication and liberalism destroy the West, and it did. I lived in San Francisco uh, for two and a half years. Oh, you're at the Capitol. I was there at the headquarters for the headquarters yeah. of the Marxist, you know, the People's Republic of America. And used to go down, you know, once you, you're living in San Francisco, all of a sudden you get suddenly popular with all your friends and family. They're going, oh, gee, I was thinking about coming to San Francisco. Would uh, you take off two or three days and be my <laughs> private guide and take me everywhere? I didn't even know you I, were I a, much, a you Marshall. Know? I didn't even know you lived out there. Oh yeah, I did. Oh my! And, uh, so what? You know the basic stuff: Pier sure. Forty Nine, Alcatraz, Golden Gate. You know the cable cars, Knob Hill. All that jazz, yeah. The, the basic route. 
But it was, I always was going to Pier 49. Loved it. The restaurants were fabulous. The food was excellent. They had the steam tables out front. Mm. And you could get crab and other stuff. And it was all delicious. And I'd go with my wife at the time. We'd go and, and get stuff out of the steamers. And then go sit out on a bench near the fishing boats and just picnic. And it was just beautiful. I just saw a video of it that was shot uh, about a week or so ago. All of these restaurants, everything's closed. The only thing that was open was a 7-Eleven and a small curio shop and uh, some museum. Wow. Everything else. These were restaurants that were established over 100 years ago. Gone. Absolutely gone. And I saw that. And I just going, you know, God, you guys realize what you've lost here? And this was all because of, you know, the lockdowns and all of this oh, insanity yeah. and California. It's, you know, <clears throat> it just gets that way. And unfortunately, things aren't going, I don't think things are going to get much better for California in the years ahead. And as it is, uh, you know, a lot more people are moving out. Try and run a truck one way out of California these days. You know? <laughs> Woo. That'll surprise you. And it's a, it's just sad to see what happens. And I can see why people are discouraged and they're down. And so when I was writing this, I was trying in my mind, I'm going, okay. People are under a, a false assumption that all of this began with Trump. Okay, it's like, boom, he came down on the elevator, golden elevator, and uh, that's it. Everything started. That was the first day of history. If you think that's the case, you're as dumb as a box of rocks. What's happening in our country goes back hundreds of years. This is a freedom movement dating all the way back to the 1100s. To the 1100s. And so what I wanted to show people is that there's history to this. So be patient because generations upon generations upon generations of patriots have waited and hoped for these times that we're in today. And they went back to their maker not seeing the big show. Take comfort in their sacrifice and their belief in the future. And that was the point I wanted to get across. And so I started working on the article. And in my technique, let me just explain real quick. There's just four things you sure. don't know. All right. Uh, because you're in a three-dimensional construct, but you're using a two-dimensional answer engine. So you're using a three-dimensional construct, which is the antidote for the matrix, to formulate your AI queries. Here is where you get the real power of the AI. You're no longer allowing it total control over the context. The AI is only going to be able to work with what it has. So, you know, and uh, there's an old expression in computers, GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. That was from the 20th century. In the 21st century, GIGO remains the same acronym, but the meaning is different. Now, it's Google in, garbage out. And that's really what it is. Right. And, so, and history is repeating itself, Marshall, as I told you off air. It's right. pretty crazy because, you know, we're talking about the Anunnaki. We're talking about AI. We're talking about the future. And when I look back at things, I recall reading about the Anunnaki and how, of course, they experimented with early Homo sapiens to bring them to that level. And before, before actually being created in this form, there were other versions of man uh, some that were pretty much robotic as well without brains in other words so in a sense the anunnaki actually invented ai and, and robots in, in a strange sense 
Well, the Anunnaki, they're coming. They're going to want women and gold. They need the gold for their atmosphere. They need the women for the, their slave breeding programs. My feeling is let them have the gold and touch our women. We'll burn you out of the sky. I was going to say, let them have the women. No, no, we're not going to give. I don't No, Michael. No, no. I mean, they don't complain enough. Just give them up. Well, if you want, just give, <laughs> them, the fem, just give them the feminists. There but, you go. <laughs> you, got, you, know, you have to do that. And, but yes, uh, in all seriousness, yes, I understand. Uh, ultimately, of course, we would not want to give up the, the women, the children, nothing of that nature, obviously. That's right. We want right. our families. Right. We want our mothers. We want the women that are, you know, bringing next generation because they're going to come for young women and they're going to, uh, and I wrote about this. and Right being in it for the species and it, it's really sad what's going to happen to these women if we don't intervene but getting back to my construct basics yes right when you're moving around in the construct first off the word timeline is a two-dimensional word it is not three-dimensional because the only place a straight line can exist in all of nature is in the handiwork of a sentient being. That's the only place you could see it, is in the handiwork of a sentient being. And when people say timelines, it doesn't reflect time. Time is a river, and it never flows backwards. It's vast. It's always moving forward, and we are within a large time stream in these times. And so everything is fluid. It's dynamic. Whereas when you think timeline, it's static. I go to A to B to C to D to E, you know, and all that. No, in a three-dimensional, you could bing, bang, boom, zip, zang, zoom. You know, it's like the old um, uh, pinball machines and the, the ball comes down and it hits one of those bumpers and next thing you know it's just it goes off in a dozen different directions and that's more of what time is and so instead of thinking in straight lines a better way to think about it is when you fly on airlines and you go to the last page of the in-flight magazine what do you see you see and a route map for the airline with hubs and spokes and you know everything's jumping all over the place that is more that is a two dimensional metaphor for this three dimensional technique and you're doing that now there's four elements of this and uh, i get a lot of there's a lot of substance a lot of background i explain how i came to this methodology and the events that influenced it but here is the four things you remember. Events, triggers, threads, and spots. And events are events in time. And I use metaphors in the article. In this one, it's raindrops falling on a flat pond of water and you see the ripples. That's really more of what events are. And this is the result of being a remote viewer and of a channeled author who was going into the future and looking at future prophecies. And what we learned is that, you know, the, when we get prophetic dreams and visions and things like that, and they're given to us from the other side, they're thinking three-dimensionally. And we're trying to translate it, everything into two dimension. And it's like trying to take, 10 pounds of guacamole and shove it into a three pound guacamole sack. All right. And it's not going to work out so well. And that's the reason in two dimensional thinking and how we express ourselves in language two dimensionally is why the evil ones are able to blindside us because they understand in a two dimensional view of time, you have a chain of events. All they have to do is interrupt that chain. 
break the chain, and that's it. You're lost. It's not working anymore. But if you're in a three-dimensional concept, you're immune to that. You don't see it. All right? So you have events, and that's what you're looking for, events. An event, an example of an event is the attempted assassination on Trump. Then you have triggers, and I use a metaphor of a dandelion putting pollen out into the air. And these are ideas, and you never know where they float off to, and they're always looking for a pistol to land on. And then you have threads. Now, threads is the real cool part of my technique because it's like metadata. You know, when you're making a web page, you have the page title, and then you could have metadata, and that's what the search engine is going to display, a short description of what you're doing. The thing about threads is that it's a way that you connect things by attribute or characteristic. Events are what the event is. The trigger is what the trigger is. And triggers are alpha triggers or propagated. An alpha trigger is some guy writes a book, throws an idea out there, and it sets in motion a series of event propagations. And with threads, you can start finding these. Now, the key to it is that, and here's why I feel that this would be really valuable for the White Hats to help the sleepers, as they call them now, to awaken from this programming, is that this use of threads is a real three-dimensional view of how you're going to formulate your queries for the search engine. Think about the search engine as a tool that makes Legos. And if you're using a regular search engine, what are you going to get? You're going to get a pile of Legos on the table of every kind of color and whatever. All right. It's just a big pile. Now you got to sort it out. But with an AI app, it takes all of those Legos and it puts them in a little plastic bins that are labeled and white and blue and this and that and everything's unique and it makes it much easier. But either way, whether it's a pile or it's organized, you're the one that still has to give a context by creating a Lego design. And that's an artistic process and you see it through. So what's happening is that with my method, these are the things that you're looking for in the construct. Now, the question is, is how do you enter your construct? What is the portal into your construct? I call it a single point of truth. And this is something that is an undeniable fact of historical importance. And this is your construct portal, and it's also excellent as thread starters. So. In this, the what I did was, uh, and, and literally, I was writing this article, and I just wanted to use this as an example for my diggers. And then I'm going, wow, this is this is this could be a real help for the white hats. The spot in the article is consent of the governed, and that's where it starts. And what I do is I show you my queries using this technique with perplexity, and I put the results in the article so you can see it, and then I highlight, highlight and note. I'm saying, here's triggers, here's events, here's alpha triggers, so forth. And it takes them through the whole process of how to analyze this. And, and then also you can use it to go back and use search engines. One thing I find with search engines that's useful is that with an AI answer engine, you're getting something that's crafted by the AI. Whereas if you're on a plain search engine, you're going to find other dialogues by live human beings. So you're going to have a more human experience. And sometimes that's a lot more passionate, uh, much more enthusiastic about certain things. And so you use that. And then I go through the whole thing of threading the events, 
time jumping, what is it all about? And the conclusion of it is that we are in a multi-generational global freedom movement. And I just wanted to share that with people who are feeling like, oh man, what is this controlled opposition and Trump's playing us along so we won't, you know, interrupt and not go and have a civil war and all of this. And he's playing us because he's working the other side of the coin. No, no. With 3D, when this method, you see that, you start understanding this and looking at things three-dimensionally, you cut that crap out. All of this second guessing is what the scumbags want you to do. They want you to doubt your sources, doubt your confidence, doubt everything. And in those doubts, they will manipulate you. You will be their bitch. And this has been going on for hundreds of years. All right? And so what I'm trying to do is I'm saying, if you're time jumping for freedom, you're no longer their bitch because you're not seeing the world the way they see the world. Your picture is much broader. It's closer to a fifth dimensional view than it is a third dimensional view that's two dimensional. And I started working on the article and I said, you know, I just, it's in me. I feel I need to write this. Now, I don't know. It'll probably bore a lot of people to death. They'll go, oh, it's too geeky, man. You know, give me something easy. And no, my readers are liking it. And they're reading it. And they're reading it all the way through. And they're getting it. And here's what I want to say to those of you out there. Dealing with the sleepers. That's the new name for the normies that are giving us all this grief, that 15% of the population that could drive us into slavery. And once the cognitive dissonance has shattered their MK Ultra programming, right, then how do people who are basically two-dimensional critical thinkers, two-dimensional and when I'm talking about two-dimensional, what are we talking about? Categories, hierarchies, subordinate, superior. Everything's in measured distances and uh, ranks of order and all of that. And that's the reason why you put together a 2D model and you change one element, the whole house of cards comes down. In a 3D model, you just surgically remove one card and replace it, or not even replace it at all because you don't have a two-dimensional structure that'll clap in on itself. And that's the whole point of time jumping for freedom. And this process, and I learned this when I was doing my channeled readings, my remote viewing, is that it really is a matter of left brain, right brain. Critical thinkers are more left brain. And these folks are not so much, they're more emotional, more right brain, but driven by fear. Their capacity for reasoning objectively is, uh, it's amazing. You see man on the street interviews and they go, who are you voting for? Kamala. What has Kamala done since she's been in office that is notable? Uh, I don't know. Is your life better under Kamala? Uh, I don't know. But why are you voting for Kamala? Because she is the hope for democracy. And they go back to the narrative. What are you going to do? How do you reach them? How do you have this conversation? But I realized if you're trying to create a bridge for consensus, between critical thinkers and sleepers. This is a way to do it because with this technique I developed based on my channeling experience and my remote viewing experience, it forces you, you're time jumping, you're jumping in time and space at the speed of thought. 
And in order to do this, you have to use your left and right brain. And so you're constantly popping back and forth. And this is very unnatural. And my hope is that this MK Ultra programming, it has a weak spot. The MK Ultra programming is definitely, you know, it's two dimensional. It's fear based and manipulation. It's just pure evil, pure, pure evil. But when you're doing something that's three dimensional in concept and you're looking at it, you're seeing things more literally like Kevin does or like a remote viewer does. And so instead of saying, well, let's argue about this. And then we're going to argue about that. And then we're going to argue about the other thing. And it's like, uh oh, that ain't going to work. You know that ain't going to work. That's the reason why Jan Helper is busting her buns to try and figure out when we'll be able to make a move without the people. They're not going to like it. They're not going to be awake. They're going to be asleep. And how do you get them from not? going to violence and that's what they do if there's something that is against their narrative their programming they become violent in their reaction and so they're really worried about this well the cognitive dissonance will take the cocky out of them they may still go oh kamala still heil kamala you know heil biden heil obama you know, and they're doing all this crap. You know, Marshall, I think we're going to see something unfold. Uh, who, after, who, who, after the election, it doesn't matter who wins, I think we're going to see someone, some side erupt uh, with violence, of course. I think that's what we're going to ultimately see. I think we're going to have violence. Now, the question is, in order to have a kinetic civil war, you have to have both sides going to the street. I think the violence we're going to be seeing is going to come from the left. And I think the patriots understand, you know, and if it's, uh, you know, hey, grab your gun and run to the street, start shooting them bastards. We're going to be in a kinetic civil war, and that's when the deep state's going to say, oh, we need the United Nations to rescue us from ourselves and these crazy fascists. And next thing you know, we got blue helmets everywhere. The, you know, the senior executive service, which is the dark hat control, con they are the control. They're the controllers of the country, senior executive service. And these people are bloodthirsty Marxist bastards. And if we go into a kinetic civil war, by law, they then step in, take authority, they shut down the government, declare martial law, and the next thing they're going to do is that's the end of the Constitution, and they're going to change the name of the country to the uh, People's Republic of America. Something's going to happen, Marshall. That's what I'm feeling right now. Oh, yeah, something's going to something's happen. Something's going to happen, unfortunately. Something's going to happen, but I am seeing what the White Hats are doing, and I understand that people are frustrated and, you know, it's like, when in the hell are they going to do something? Well, they're doing things all the time. We're in a global war. It's in multiples. You know, there's multiple battle zones. I think the most interesting, the one I follow assiduously, is lawfare. And particularly uh, what the Supreme Court is doing. And the Supreme Court just blows me away because they have come out and completely eviscerated the this bureaucratic deep state. You know, they Chevron deference and they reversed that policy that the Supreme Court implemented 40 years ago. That's it. They took the power away from these all these agencies to just invent codes, rules, regulations, and fines at discretion with the authority of law, and they're all on an elected bureaucrats. The Supreme Court said, ah, ah, no more, it's over, okay? We see that, you see the Supreme Court is very strong on Second Amendment. 
we lose our ability to defend ourselves. We're, look at Australia. Good example. The Australians were talked into turning in their guns for the betterment of the country. And now they're, they are slaves. They are the bitches of the communists, and they can't break it. And they know it. And they're going to mention the U.K. for a moment there. Uh, same with the U.K. Yeah, it's even worse. <laughs> okay? So oh it's my. really bad. But in America, we have our... AR-15. We might get there, though. We might end up looking like the UK in a few years, maybe even sooner than that. I don't think so. I, I hope not. We're going to look like, you know, make America great again. The old America is never coming back. Of course uh, not. Let's no. get over that. Yeah. Let's just get over that. Let's focus on what's coming. Because what's coming could be a much better America, a different America. All right? And we're going to reinvent ourselves. And because I, I see things in this three-dimensional model and have for the longest time, I really didn't realize I was doing this and how transformative this is, this way of thinking, until I started working on this article. And what happens is once you see everything three-dimensionally versus two-dimensional, and, and in there I have... Uh, where is it? Uh, I, you know, I have a little example that says, let's assume you are rafting with your friends. You feel your feet in the water. The sun is on your face. There's a breeze on your back. You hear your friends laughing and celebrating, and it's a beautiful day. So let's say that's 200 characters. That's how you explain that day two-dimensionally. You have to each thing. I feel this with my feet. I feel this on my back. I feel this other thing. I feel this other thing. You have to go one at a time because that's two-dimensional thinking. You have to go through a progression. But when you do three-dimensional, it is thinking. It's how you actually perceive the world. And in the article, I go, in a two-dimensional world, you need 200 characters to explain it, and then it's herky-jerky. In three-dimensional thinking, only one character, one character, an exclamation mark. Because we see and experience everything simultaneously. Do you sit there and go, okay, I'm going to focus on my feet in the water. Now I'm going to focus on the sun on my face. Now I'm going to focus on you know, the wind at my back. And now I'm going to focus on hearing my friends laugh. That's two-dimensional. Three-dimensional is life. It's what we experience. And it's all just one beautiful thing happening at the same time. One character, three-dimensional, 200 characters, two-dimensional. All right? And this is the difference of thinking with my construct time jumping technique and i think a key advantage of this is that and i get into it and i explain it with the threads now here's the thing about my technique can the black cats can the nasties use it yes up to a point they can do events they can do triggers they can do spots but what they're weak at are threads. How do, you conv how do you find an attribute that is common that will connect a disparate number of events that seem to have no visible connection, and yet through this thread, you find this connection that pulls them all together like a string of pearls, all right? And that's what it does. And in order to do that, you cannot be effective in any kind of 3D technique like remote viewing or my construct time jumping technique if you are in a state of fear or any other fear-based emotion, anger, frustration, whatever. You do that, you're stupid. You are dumb. That's it. Because fear is the mind killer. It destroys it. So 
it becomes if these sleepers who are now dealing with their cognitive dissonance are trying to grip with this, here's a way for you to have a conversation. And, you know, if they're saying, well, okay, you did this and you did that, and you said, you know, the experience of becoming aware is as important as awareness itself. It's the journey, not the destination that matters. And if you're doing this, your journey is going to go much faster and with much less difficulty, long as you don't go into fear. All right. The minute you go into fear, this collapses. It's useless to you. And so there is that incentive to stay out of fear, which is where the CIA MK Ultra programming has got them centered. It pulls them out of that because now they're time jumping and going from left hemisphere to right hemisphere. And in order to do it, you cannot be in a state of fear. So if you are trying to work with a normie who is now coming into awareness, all right, you ch what you do is instead of getting into, you know, well, we believe that and you believe this and we said that and you said this, you know, where is that going to get you? Nowhere. Okay. But on the other hand, you say, you know, here's a way of looking at things that's going to help you. It's going to calm you and help you to find some sense of order in the world. Now that your bubble has been broken by cognitive dissonance and you're forced, whether you like it or not, to deal with it. And so what you do is you say, okay, use this technique. Now, what we will do is we're going to have a conversation. And what I'll do is I'll say, here's a spot, run it down. Here's another spot, run it down. Go find the events, the alpha triggers, the propagated triggers, all of this stuff. Go find this stuff, but here's a spot, which in my article is consent of the governed. And when you read the answers and you see this, you're going to realize that we are the direct beneficiaries of generations of faithful, loving patriots who labored throughout their lives so that we could have a better life, that we could have as a species, that we could break out of this third dimension jail that we're in and go to the fifth dimension. And we have that ascension, that, you know, a whole new life, a golden age. And Trump even talks about that. And I think one of the things we'll see, uh, you know, and, I, and I'm also starting to see it already, is Trump is becoming more spiritual. And this has been transformative for him. And so, if you can see this in a way, and, and, and the nice thing about three-dimensional and you're calm and you're at peace, the nasties cannot bullshit you. They can't blindside you anymore. It doesn't mean they don't have the ability to do it in some way. But even if you get blindsided, Instead of sitting there and you're going, oh, my God, I'm going to have an anxiety attack. Oh, I was blindsided. I'm blindsided. I'm blindsided. You know, I'm like, no. You know that you have a 3D technique for sorting it all out. Get on your AI-powered answer engine and start working the problem from a completely different way of seeing the world, a way that the elites can't see. Because you got to stand in the light of God's love to use my technique to its full extent. And if you're not standing in the light of God's love, don't bother. All right? You'll be clever. You'll be dangerous. But you're not going to be half as effective as someone that just stands in the light of God's love and starts to unpack the world before you 
in a completely different way of looking at it. And so my hope is that they would, the White Hats would do this or something like it, some way to create a bridge of consensus because they don't have that. It is the one huge regret of Dr. Jan Helper. She's really frustrated. They can't find a way to bridge in an objective conversation. But this is a bridge because you change the conversation. You go from a two-dimensional conversation of me, you, me, you, me, you. You go to 3D, it's we and us. It's a whole other way of looking at the world. And it would be, I, I'm using this to work on my next article. And I find it's fun because what makes it work is not the genius of the AI engine. Frankly, you know, I look at what's out there and I call them the green bananas. <laughs> You know, <laughs> they're not ripe, <laughs> not by a long shot, all right? And not the time, you know, so when you're peeling them, just understand they're green bananas. But that'll change in time, going to get better. And also, yeah, you're going to have these evil AIs and all that. We already have them. But people will gravitate to AI solutions that reach them on a moral and spiritual level. And that only comes from the people who develop the AI app. It is a reflection of their life values. And so you know, I look at most of the AI engines and they're just blood-sucking capitalists who throw us under the bus for a dime. And these guys actually have integrity. Makes them pretty rare. So. That's the reason why I worked on this article. And yes, I understand. It's technical. It's technical. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to read as easy as I love Lucy. But I have structured it and people tell me they can follow it and it makes sense to them. And so what I would suggest to your listeners, come to my site, yowusa.com and read my article, How the Meek Inherit the Earth, number 13, Time Jumping for Freedom. And if you need, it's a long article. It's a long article. I think it was 18 pages. And, but it had to be because I'm doing instruction. It's actually technical documentation. Everything you need to know. You don't have to go anywhere else. Everything you need to know is in the article. It's a one-stop shop. What I would ask people is go in, spend a little time, learn the technique, and then do two or three query series with different spots, single points of truth. By the third time you do it, you will begin to notice a difference in your thinking. You will notice it. You may not jump on it. You may not really understand the full impact of it, but you will notice a difference and you will notice that you have more calmness, that you're not being whipsagged, whip, you know, whipped around with being blindsided and having to deal with the anxiety of that. It takes out the anxiety. It doesn't mean you can't be blindsided. You still can but the way you respond to it will be much more objective and positive. And once you do that, you start looking at this and you see this in the scope of human history. We are fighting for freedom and we have always been fighting for freedom. But, you know, when you have <laughs> nail clippers and you're up against a guy that's got a 357 Magnum, that's not a fair fight, right? For much of our history, you know, that's it. We're going to a gunfight with nail clippers. Now that's changed. 
Now it's different. All right. And so does that make what's happening any less awful? No, it doesn't. But it gives you a way to deal with it that will give you calmness and a sense of control over your own destiny that two-dimensional thinking will never give you if you're not an intuitive, critical thinker, period. So there it is. And for those of you that it's interested, and if you have sleepers in your friends and family, all right, and when they're in cognitive dissonance, you know, are they going to come to you and say, well, all those things that you were saying over the years that I thought was bullshit? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're not so much bullshit. Okay. And, but you're still an asshole, but I need to know something. So asshole, tell me something. Yeah, you're going to, don't even go with that. Don't even go there. Don't honor it. Wait until you get a respectful request. And then instead of, you know, instead of jumping into something and you start getting into all these issues that are going to trigger their MK Ultra programming, and they're going to all of a sudden be in conflict with you and everything that's going on. All right? You don't want that. So it would be much better to say, you know, go read this article about time jumping, and I'll be glad to help you. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to talk about what you want to talk about. We're going to talk about events, triggers, threads, and spots. A whole new way of looking at things. And when you do it, all of this precision of language that is used to confuse and befuddle us is bullshit. You see it through it immediately. It's obvious for what it is. You don't get taken in. And that's the whole point of it. And if you're going to be a three-dimensional thinker, why should that be difficult? You're already a three-dimensional liver. You live your life in three dimension. You experience it in three dimension. So why do you have to keep explaining it in two dimensions? Why do we have to reduce human destiny to papyrus? And clay tablets, all right? We've come a long way, and we can do it much differently. And so that's why I did this. I want people to use it. Most importantly, I want people to understand. You don't have to. It, it's helpful to hear what people like 107 and Dr. Jan Helper and Patriot Underground, you, and there's a lot of other wonderful diggers out there. Oh, my God. We have, we're so gifted with alternative voices. It's stunning. It's stunning. And to understand that we are in a freedom movement that began thousands of years ago. All right? And it's never stopped. And now it's showtime. And that's the reason why they say, enjoy the show. Very nice. Yeah. And, I, and, and I'll tell you, you know, it's like I was for a long time, enjoy the show and was what? I'm drinking Bud Light up in the cheap seats. Wait and see who's going to win so I can be a Johnny come lately. Nah. Nah. You see, that's two-dimensional thinking. Because this is really a three-dimensional battle for the species. Everybody, everybody has a thumb in this rice bowl. And if you think it's someone else is going to do it, you're stupid. Now, the universe has only one law of survival for sentient species. Only one law, and that is, if you are stupid, you deserve to die. Which brings me to another reason why this could be so helpful for the sleepers. 
We have to stop thinking of them as political adversaries and understand the need. We have to heal the divides. Healing the divides is the outcome, not deepening them. And so both sides are going to have to set their egos and their issues aside to agree on a better outcome for all of humanity. And you change and you shift to that. And so you're teaching your friends how to do this technique. And then you're saying, let's have fun and let's work it together. And you're no longer using any of the ways that we sort things out in our three-dimensional, in the 3D world with our two-dimensional way of explaining it, you're not subject to that. It's completely different. And then it will help open your eyes. And once you realize how many generations have gone before us with Love for our species, love for humanity, and the hope that we will achieve the destiny of a golden age that is rightfully ours. They fought for it, they died for it, and they never saw it. We can see it. It's here, it's coming. Focus on the outcomes and don't go play in the gutter with the rats. The rats own the gutter. <laughs> and they speak 2D. You're three-dimensional. And because you stand in the light of God's love, you will be affected. So there it is. Very nice. And, of course, you guys want to read that article in its entirety. Go to you or Yao usa.com that's y-o-w usa.com and marshall i do want to thank you for being a part of the program as always and good lord that was a hell of a presentation marshall i had no idea you had it in you and i'm grateful that you gave me a chance to let it out i know you know i'm God, glad God. yes i'm glad you got it out there marshall i know you wanted to have this discussion here and do this presentation for us and we appreciate it greatly. And Marshall, once again, I will see you on the other side, my friend. You got it. Thanks. Thanks, Michael.